We're Group 7, consisting of Kai Bernadini, Kyle Hughes, Caroline Lee, and Anne Ming Samborski. Our topic is Rowhammer, subverting a system via bit flips. We'll first discuss what Rowhammer is and the compon components that cause this vulnerability. We want to determine the extent of Rowhammer, so our research consists of testing various attack surfaces. This includes Intel machines, IoT devices, specifically Intel Edison and Inforce boards, and various Android smartphones. So, what is Rowhammer? Rowhammer is a method in exploiting bit flips in Dynamic Random Access Memory, or DRAM. First discovered to be exploitable in 2014, researchers discovered that accessing specific portions of physical memory made it possible to change contents of other memory rows due to the leaking charges of memory cells. Next, I'll briefly discuss the history of Rowhammer to show the severity of this exploitation. In March of 2015, Google's Project Zero group found the first exploitations using Rowhammer, performing privilege escalations. Before this point, the research done had only theorized that exploitations were possible, but there was no working evidence until this point. The ex exploitation was only limited to certain Intel chips and implemented in a low level. A year later, University of Amsterdam researchers were able to show that Rowhammer can be performed in an architecture and instruction set independent way. They proved this by performing Rowhammer in a pure JavaScript script implementation that runs on Firefox 39. A few months later, the same group presented a way to exploit this further, so that a malicious virtual machine would be able to gain unauthorized access to a co-hosted victim VM running OpenSSH using a new Rowhammer technique called Flip Feng Shui. Most recently, in October of this year, it was shown that an attacker could be able to take control of a, over an Android phone by hiding DRAMer, a new Rowhammer technique that uses the FIP Feng Shui method in a malicious app that requires no special permissions. To understand how these exploitations were done, it's important to first understand the properties of DRAM and how bit flips are able to occur at all. DRAM chips consist of a collection of two-dimensional memory arrays known as banks. Each bank consists of DRAM cells where each cell contains a capacitor and access transistor. In each bank, there is a row buffer which acts as a fast local cache. Each cell in the row buffer lies at the intersection of a horizontal word line and a vertical bit line. The word line wire links cells in a particular row, while the bit line connects all cells in a particular column. In order to access a byte in memory, data needs to be transferred from the row into the row buffer. This occurs when the row's word line receives a high charge which immediately activates the access transistors within the row. Since each cell is the intersection of both a bit line and a word line, this then connects all the capacitors to their respective bit lines. As DRAM chips scale down and the distance between adjacent cells decreases, it becomes progressively more challenging to prevent DRAM cells from electrically interacting with one another. Jung et al. observed that repeatedly accessing specific rows, or row hammering, of physical DRAM memory can cause charge to jump and result in random bit flips in adjacent rows. In order to access specific rows of a DRAM chip repeatedly, there are two obstacles that need to be overcome. First, we need to bypass the row buffer by selecting two distinct addresses that are mapped to distinct rows within the same bank. By randomly selecting an address pair XY, and by using the absolute physical address of memory found in PROC PID page map, we can determine whether two addresses are mapped to different rows within the same bank. Second, we need to bypass the CPU's cache by evicting the contents of X and Y. On Intel chips, we can simply use the cache flush or C flush assembly instruction, while on ARM devices, we can make use of the direct memory access. The password is... So, now that we have some background on Rowhammer, let's talk about the machines that we actually attacked with it. Uh, we started with our Intel machines, which includes this list, uh, most of which are personal laptops. Uh, all of these contain uh, Intel chips, which according to the literature are vulnerable to this exploit. And the method we used was the Rowhammer test code found at this location. Now the Internet of Things devices we used uh, were two boards, 
due to the scope of the project, we decided to limit it to two. And the idea behind the Internet of Things devices was that um, the Internet of Things devices that have poor uh, security could be used as a potential vulnerability to the host machine uh, where it's sending information, where that's connected to, or that's SSHing into it. Um, so from using Rohammer on the Internet of Things device, we could potentially use it as a stepping stone to hack a host machine. Uh, so this is the first board that we used, the uh, Inforce IFC 6410. Um, it has the uh, different architecture than an Intel machine, uh, but we had no in information uh, one way or the other about whether it would or would not work, so we ran the test. And then secondly, we have the Intel Edison board, um, whose uh, built-in kernel couldn't uh, run the program uh, by itself, so we had to make some necessary modifications first, but uh, then we ran the test on it. DRAMer distinguishes itself from other Rohammer vulnerabilities because it is deterministic. What differentiates DRAMer from previous Rohammer exploits is the fact that DRAMer is a deterministic attack that makes no assumptions about page size or memory to duplication. VUSEC et al. developed a method that allows an unprivileged application to obtain root privileges by leveraging the predictable patterns of the buddy memory allocator. For every allocation request of size 2 to the n, the buddy allocator will search for a block of size 2 to the n. If none are found, it will find the next first block of size 2 to the k, where k is greater than n, and split the resulting blocks in half until 1 is of size 2 to the n. Whenever a block of memory is released, the buddy allocator searches for neighboring blocks of the same size to merge, which is the reverse of the previous step. The key observation made by VUSEC et al. was by massaging memory in a clever way, it is possible to determine the exact mapping of a subsequent memory allocation. More specifically, by exhausting all large chunks of contiguous memory, releasing them, and quickly reallocating them into smaller memory blocks, it is possible to make the Rohammer attack deterministic. Once a vulnerable location in memory is successfully found, attackers are then able to mount an attack similar to the Google Project Zero exploit. Instead of spraying memory with page tables, DRAMer allows the attacker to flip a bit at a particular offset in the page table. They can make it point to their own page table and achieve read-write access on all of memory, including kernel memory. Specifically, in our exploration of this attack, we gathered numerous Android devices to test for bit flips. We were able to identify possible vulnerability in the HTC One, LG G3, and OnePlus 3. We were not able to find a bit flip with Samsung Galaxy S6. All of these findings were in keeping with the results of the DRAM routine. We were not, however, able to identify a bit flip in the Nexus 4, which was found in the original paper. This is not of too great a concern because the bit flip test code does not necessarily produce a guaranteed answer one way or the other. To reiterate quickly, the main goal of this project was to explore the extent of the Rohammer bug, which we did through investigating Intel devices, IoT devices, and Android mobile devices. Because Rohammer could cause severe damage based on a bit flip, we wished to recreate the attack in order to see how easily Rohammer could be accomplished. Ultimately, we found that although Rohammer, particularly DRAMer, is treated as a trivial attack once bit flips are identified, it was not in fact easy to reproduce.